So, the, the Bhagavad Gita has 18 chapters, and out of the 18 chapters, chapter 2 is the summation of the whole book. And so, I wanted to just read some verses. Um, not, I'm not going to read in Sanskrit, but... Um, and this is the basis for everything else. So... Krishna, after Arjuna, this, this exchange, or this book, is an exchange between Krishna and Arjuna. They're both warriors, they're, in, they're facing the, 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 the armies on the opposite side, and they're just about ready to go to war. And Arjuna becomes very weak-hearted. He says, uh, uh, how can I do this? He says, on the opposite side, I see my friends, my relatives, my teachers. How, I'm not prepared to, to, to kill them in battle. I'd rather die unarmed. And he, he suggests that he's going to become nonviolent, which normally, especially Western people, they think, oh, that's very nice. But Krishna says, no, that's not very good. You're, you're a warrior. Your business is fighting. And I want this fighting to take place. And so when Arjun finally says, but actually I'm confused. I don't know what to do now. Uh, please instruct me. And so Krishna, the first thing he says, after Arjuna has given all these good, intelligent, logical, and noble reasons for not fighting, the blessed Lord said, while speaking learned words, you are mourning for what is not worthy of grief. Those who are wise lament neither for the living nor the dead. So then, never was there a time when I did not exist, nor you, nor all these kings, and never in the future shall any of us cease to be. This is Krishna speaking to Arjuna. As an embodied soul continually passes in this body from boyhood to youth, the soul similarly passes into another body at death. The self-realized soul is not bewildered by such a change. So Krishna is giving the most fundamental uh, uh, Establishing the most fundamental platform of understanding for a human being. What is that? Life is ever changing. That. Say it again. Life is ever changing. Life is ever changing. But Krishna says, Never was there a time when I did not exist, nor you, nor all these kings. Never shall there be a time when we shall cease. So he's making this discrimination that. I and you and all these kings, we are not this ever-changing body. The body is ever-changing from the moment of conception to birth, then it becomes a, a baby, a child, a grown, an old man, and dead man. So, um, this is the beginning of, from the Vedic standard, or Vedic human. The beginning of knowledge is when a human being distinguishes matter from spirit. He understands and pursues this um, perspective in life, in spite of, he may be a, 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 an artist, a musician, a, a politician, whatever he may be, but his main perspective is always to distinguish and keep himself sober. I'm not this body, I'm the living force which moves the body. In fact, there's a nice verse where, where it is said, as a man gives up an old and useless dress, and he gets a new dress, the soul gives up an old and useless body, and he takes a new body. In that my dress it becomes torn and sore. I throw it, I get another dress. So I remain the same, dress changes. So the body is compared to a dress. And because we do not get this basic education in school from childhood. It should be taught from the very beginning of childhood. Because if I go through life without understanding the difference between matter and spirit, or life and matter, then everything I do ends in disappointment, frustration, bewilderment, and mistake. This, this, is, the, this is why 
Um, Vedic knowledge is so important because, unlike many other cultures, they had a very systematic way of organizing the society so that everyone in any station would be on this, how do you say, this uh, path or this platform of understanding I'm not matter, I'm spirit. Hi.